Praise the Lord. Amen. So great to have Dr. Brad Norman with us all the way from the UK, from Hearts International Church, Hertfordshire. And uh, he's a son of the house. And every time he's around, he's here because his mom is not doing too well. So he had to come. And I said, you got to be with us. you got to be with us. And so he's here this morning. And Dr. Brad, I love what the Lord is doing back there in the UK, in and through your church. I mean, it's just revivals happening. People are getting saved, healed, delivered, touched by the presence of God. And we rejoice together with you and the great work that you and your wife, Waona, are doing. Of course, the team, Pastor uh, Bianca, is getting married soon now in September. And we're, we're excited about that. Would you stand up with me, family? And let's put our hands together and give Dr. Brad a big God bless you this morning as he comes to share the Word of the Lord with us. Good morning, Durban Christian Centre. Anybody out there this morning? So good to see you, so good to be home. This is our home base. I'd like to honour the angel in the house. That's biblical, you know. He is your messenger and the angels. Dr. John, Dr. Joy, two of our best, most favourite friends in the whole wide world. We honour you. Thank you for the opportunity today. Would you put your hands together and just thank the Lord for them. Take your seats, please. And of course, we honor our spiritual parents, Dr. Fred and Dr. Nelly. I hope Dr. Nelly is watching. If you're at home this morning, we love you. We honor you. Let's honor her as well. Come on. We have been seeing a phenomenal move of God in the United Kingdom. We're seeing a breakout of revival. We're seeing miracles on an unprecedented scale. And uh, we are just walking in the mandate that Dr. Fred gave us when we were sent out to Europe 22 years ago to win the lost at any cost. We haven't focused on revival or anything else. We've just focused on the end time harvest. How many of you know this is the greatest hour of opportunity for the church? Thank you for the enthusiasm of the first two rows. I said this is the greatest hour of opportunity for the church because we're living in the last days. We've just lived through a global pandemic and a shaking like we in this generation have never experienced before. Did ever you imagine that in your lifetime you would see the church shut down? No. This virus was a very real thing, man-made, in a laboratory somewhere in the world. We won't mention the name. But I want to tell you that this virus came into the world with a whole agenda from the very pit of hell. An agenda to shut down nations, to shut down economies, to shut down healthcare systems, but most especially of all, to shut down the church. How many of you know you cannot shut down the church of Jesus? Hallelujah. And Hebrews chapter 12 says we better get ready because this is just the beginning of the birth pains. It's the signs that we're entering into a season right now of preparation for the coming of Jesus. We don't know when that moment will be. Jesus said, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. But the Bible says, work while there is yet light because night is coming. Hallelujah. And uh, it's so wonderful to see what the Lord is doing here. Uh, we've watched online and we've seen the drive-in church and the drive-through communion and the incredible life. This church has not stopped for a moment during the last uh, 28 months. And I want to commend your leaders and your pastors for being trendsetters for the rest of us around the world as we've watched what the Lord is doing here. I want to tell you it's time for the church to wake up. Look in your Bible quickly, if you would, with me. The book of Acts chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw how it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put it in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people until the Passover. The Bible says Peter was kept in the prison and he went to sleep, chained between these two guards with a whole host of guards, four groups of them outside the door. But I want to tell you, in the middle of the night, there came a visitor into that prison cell. The angel of the Lord stepped in. Hallelujah. 
And the Bible says that Peter was asleep, but the angel came and shook him awake and said, get up. And Peter said nothing. Peter wasn't sure what was happening. But the Bible says that that angel brought deliverance to the man of God. I want to tell you tonight, this morning rather, get ready. Even as that angel stepped into Peter's night, I believe that this day the Lord is getting ready to watch over this word and to step into some places in your life. Peter was asleep. The church right now is asleep. Statistics tell us that 33% or more of the church will not return post the pandemic. That's a shocking number. You don't see many churches like this to have two Sunday morning services with this number of people here. You study the church, look at trends in America and throughout Europe, churches are half empty. The church is asleep. But I came to tell you this morning, the Lord says it's time for the church to wake up. Hallelujah. Because there's an assignment against the church right now as we look at what's happening in the world and the pressure that we're facing, the pressure on the church to say, well, you know, this is just the best that we can expect. If we've got to go back to bed with the devil here or there, compromise on this or that, if we've got to sleep with the enemy in order to survive, it's a price that we're willing to pay. I want to tell you this morning, such a church will never occupy in this day and in this hour and fulfill the end time mandate of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you shout hallelujah? That angel came in and shook Peter. I believe this morning the church needs another mighty shaking of the Holy Ghost. Look at the person next to you this morning and say, wake up. You better wake up. <laughs> Give yourself a little shake this morning and say, I came this morning to be woken up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give your neighbor a little prophetic shake this morning. Nothing too hard. We don't want the stewards having to crawl under the seats at the close of the service looking for somebody's false teeth. But I want you to open up your mouth and I want you to shout as loud as you can, wake me up, shake me up, shake me until I get my fight back, shake me until I get my fire back, shake me up out of this place, hallelujah. You see, there's some things that have been assigned against your life. This is not just the church that we're talking about, but the enemy will do everything he can to lure you to a place of complacency. And whatever situation that you're in right now, I don't know where you're at and what issues you are dealing with, but the one thing the devil wants to do is to give you a pillow and to cause you to lie down and go to sleep in that situation. I came to tell you, God says it's time to wake up. And I believe God says I'm getting ready to step in and I'm going to bring you out of some things. Come on. This is what somebody needs to hear this morning. This is your word because right now you are in a situation. God says, wake up. I'm about to shake you loose and I'm about to bring you out. Hallelujah. Peter was there and the Bible says he just went to sleep. Now I've heard some of the greatest preaching ever on why Peter went to sleep. What he had, he was just so full of faith and confidence and in God's deliverance. Can I suggest to you, it might just as well have been that Peter had resigned himself to the fact, well, it's been a good innings that I've had, but tomorrow it's all over, I'm gonna die. But I'm not stressed because I know heaven is my home. But I came to tell you that was not the end of the story for Peter. God wasn't done with him yet. His assignment wasn't complete yet. And I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but the enemy has been lying to you and saying to you, well, you know what? Your best days are behind you. It's over. God doesn't have another plan for you. God doesn't have another hope for you. God doesn't have another love for you. God doesn't have another vision and purpose and plan for your life. I came to tell you, wake up. It's not over. You're about to step into your best days. Bible says your ladder shall be greater than the rest hallelujah the devil's trying to make you go to sleep but God says wake up wake up you are alive for such a time as this come on somebody shout hallelujah this is not how your story ends 
This is not your default setting. This is not where you give up. I came to tell you God has a plan and God has a purpose. Hallelujah. It says the angel came in and it shook Peter. I believe that this morning, even as you are facing circumstances and situations in your life that you have resigned yourself to, God says, I'm about to step into some dark places. I want someone to open up your mouth right now and just give God about 30 seconds of crazy shaking praise. Give Him a wake me up praise. Give Him a get me out of this praise. Hallelujah. Now not notice this because we don't always realize this, but you know, when you go to sleep, if you study sleep, you fall asleep in stages. And you also wake up in stages. And here we see Peter begins the process of waking up. The angel comes in and gives him a little shake. And the Bible says he gets up. And the moment he stands up and he hears the voice of the angel and he obeys the word of the Lord, instantly the chains fall off his hands. But he begins to follow the angel not knowing where he is going. Can I stop and preach to somebody this morning? Because maybe you're in that place right now where you've been asleep spiritually so long. You've become so passive in those situations in your life that even as God begins to move and work and you hear the word of faith this morning, you're too afraid to stand up and to step out because there is a fear on the inside. Can this be true? for me can it really be for my life but the Bible says Peter got up and he followed the angel out not knowing hallelujah and then they came past the first God and then the second God and after the second God they came to a steel gate that led out into the city you know sometimes when God brings us out of some stuff in our life and, and we get radically saved and delivered it's like the pastor's always there to remind us of what was. We, we come out of the prison. The prison bars were, were bad enough, but then we come out into the new life we have in Jesus, but the odds are so stacked against us. And the voice of the past is, well, you know what? You're going to be marked by this for the rest of your life. You're just damaged goods. Anybody ever hear a voice like that from your past? But I want you to get encouraged this morning because Luke is a physician. He's a detailed man. And he tells us that even after the deliverance from the prison, they get to the gate. And he says it is an iron gate, a steel gate. I mean, this was not some little barrier. You could not push through this on your own. But the Bible says when they came up to the gate, it just opened all by itself. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that that angel was stronger than all of those 16 guards, but the angel did not kill them. And all of those guards could have killed Peter when he came out, but they didn't touch him. He just walked right past them. Came to say this morning at Durban Christian Center, I believe there's some people in this place who knows what it means. This is your testimony to have walked past some things, to have lived through some things that should have taken you out, that should have killed you. But God walked you right past them. Hallelujah. If that's you this morning, just give the Lord a roar of praise. They came up to the gate and it just opened up. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, know this this morning, that your criminal record's not going to hold you back. Hallelujah. The, 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 the medical report's not going to hold you back. That psych report that's on your file is not going to hold you back because He's given you the spirit of love and power and of a sound mind. That bankruptcy rating's not going to hold you back. God says if you wake up and you stand up and you begin to walk, Walk out, walk on the Word. When you get to the gate, it's just going to open up right in front of you. Hallelujah. Some of you know this morning, as you look back and you see the but God's in your life, you know if it wasn't for a but God, you wouldn't be here this morning. You would have been the one who died with that drug overdose. You would have lost your life in that car wreck. You would have lost your mind. You would have lost your future. 
but God. Come on, say that with me this morning. But God. Anybody look back over your life this morning and you have a but God to testify about. Let me tell you, when we get to heaven one day, and we look back on the course of our lives as it's shown before the whole of the world to see, we will see every but God, every supernatural, every divine intervention, and we will fall on our knees and we'll just begin to worship Him. That's why the Bible says, be thankful not for, but in all things, hallelujah. Is there anybody, let me just stop a moment, in this place this morning right now that needs a but God in your life? Lift up your hand. I believe that even now as the Holy Ghost is just anointing this Word, that there are but Gods falling all over this building. If you need a but God, get on your feet right now. Stand up if that's you. If you don't want one, I want one. I need two but Gods this morning. Lift your hands. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for every person standing on their feet right now who needs a supernatural, divine intervention. But God, God, we give you an invitation for a divine intervention, for a supernatural turnaround right now in the name of Jesus. Now open your mouth and prophesy. But God, hallelujah. Sit, 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 if you can. Take your seat, take your seat. Now listen, watch this. Bible says the angel comes and speaks to Peter. Wake up, get up. Speaks just loud enough for Peter to hear, but not loud enough for the soldiers to hear. Can I stop you and preach just two minutes? Sometimes when God gives you a word, you need to keep it just to yourself. You don't go speaking to every Tom, Dick, and Harry about it. I don't want no fool speaking their own mind and thoughts over my God said. You've got to let that word just germinate a little in your spirit. You check it out in the word. You check it out with your teacher, the Holy Ghost. He lives on the inside of you. Jesus said he will lead you, guide you into all the truth. He will remind you of everything I've said concerning you. Then you check it out with someone that you know, mature, that you can trust. So a thing can be established by two or three witnesses. Sometimes you just got to be quiet. Hold that word within yourself. We've got so many crazy prophetic people running around right now. The worst of all are the car park prophets and the restroom prophets. I had a prophet all the way from Manchester, travel by train, arrive at our church building and ring the buzzer. I am prophet so-and-so from Manchester. I have a prophetic word for Brad Norman. I said to my PA, she's a lovely South African lady by the name of Shanette. I said, send that fool home. Three days. He stood on my doorstep. I have a word for bread. I said, send the fool home. The Bible says prophets and apostles work together. I have great prophets in my life, prophets connected to this ministry. Why must I have some fool ranting and raving at my front door? I don't know where you've been. I don't know who you come from. I don't know who you're in relationship with. I haven't checked out your fruit. Why must I listen to your word and wonder, is this from the Lord or not? When I have prophets that I trust, can I have an amen? It's become very quiet this morning. During the pandemic, it was the worst. Suddenly we had all these wannabe self-appointed prophets sitting at home in front of their Zoom cameras and they had now a captive audience. I prophesied, I said to them, shut down, unfriend, block every false Facebook prophet that's connected with you. On I got hate mail from prophets, not just throughout the United Kingdom, but all over the world. Be careful who speaks a word over your life because there's power in your words. You know, the devil has no creative power. The only power that the devil has is what you give him. And the most powerful tool that you have that you put in the hands of the enemy are the words that come out of your mouth. That's why the Bible says death and life is in the power of your tongue. You're snared by the words of your mouth. So every time you speak, when you speak the word, when you prophesy, your God said, heaven watches over that word and there's an activation. But every negative, destructive word that comes out of your mouth gives a creative power to the enemy to work against you. Come on, somebody. 
So be careful who you allow. I have been in meetings when a prophet has come on the platform. Oh, Dr. Brad Norman, can I give you a word? I don't know who he is. I say, no, thank you. I stay in my seat. Somebody comes that you don't know, trying to give you a prophetic word. Walk away as fast as you can. Put your finger in both your ears. Don't you speak no word over me. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me this morning? Keep that word within your heart. And so he gets up and he begins to walk out into a place of freedom and liberty. I want you to know this morning, I don't know what it is that the enemy has told you has sealed your fate. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, get ready. I'm coming in to get you out. And listen to me. I don't care what demonic assignments have been leveled against your life, what's been passed down through your family tree and what they call generational curses. When you enter into relationship with Jesus Christ, you enter into a brand new bloodline and it is a line of blessing and of life. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a new beginning. It's a new start. We get to a place where we walk up to those gates that hold us in. What is your gate this morning? What is it that you see as your greatest liability? I don't know what it is right now, but I want you to know the Spirit of the Lord says, get ready, I'm about to open it. I'm about to bring you out of every limitation, every restriction that you faced in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. The gate just opened up, opened up. We've got to be so careful right now because there are so many pressures of the world that the church is facing. And in many places, the church is sleeping with the enemy. Can I get a little more direct this morning? Sleeping with things like woke culture, cancel culture. Preachers who are too afraid to speak the truth now because they're sleeping with a culture of political correctness. I got in such trouble Back in the UK, we had a a whole movement throughout all of our schools in London and the greater London area, and they were talking about gender equality, and I kid you not, this is the gospel truth. As part of an academic program, they encouraged all the boys in the junior and secondary schools to come to school on a particular day dressed in the dresses and skirts of their sisters so they could better identify with gender issues. We run a television program, Faith UK TV. We broadcast into 28 million homes 24-7. I got up on national television and I said, I'm making it known and I call every Christian father in this nation to stand with me. If you are a male educator and you try and put my boy in a skirt, you better know I'm going to show up at your classroom door. You better forget about woke culture. I'm going to show you some bloke culture. I got hundreds of emails, threats and hate mail. But I want to tell you the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4, when the church was facing persecution and Peter and James were put in prison because Acts chapter 12 wasn't the first time. Peter was in prison many times. And the Bible says he was in prison for the night. And they came out and they prayed and they said, Lord, look at their threats against us. But this was their response. Grant us the ability to preach your word in the face of the threats with greater boldness than ever before. And God, would you follow that word with signs and wonders and miracles in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Listen to me, church. It's time for us to stand up and to be counted. Because while the church is asleep, the devil is bringing his own agenda into the world. Back in the UK, during the lockdown, we had so much legislation that was slipped through. DIY abortions up to any stage of pregnancy, and they haven't revoked it. Then we had a ban on conversion therapy. That means if somebody comes and they are facing issues in terms of their sexuality, it is against the law for you to pray with them in any way whatsoever. If you pray with them, you can be charged and fined and even imprisoned. Now, when the government begins to tell the church how and when you can pray, we're in big trouble unless we stand up. Can I hear an amen this morning? 
But I want to encourage you because even as we seeing that agenda, how many of you have realized you just have to turn on your television? Look at the programming, looking at what, what's coming out of Hollywood and, and off the media mountain and how it's shaping the lives of young people. Why? Because when you mess with the identity of our children and our young people, they're easy prey for the picking. It's time for the church to stand up and say, no, not on our watch. Can I have an amen in this place this morning? We've got to begin to take a stand. We've got to begin to rise up and say, no, no, no. I hear the Lord say this. I was praying in the last few weeks. I believe that as the church, we are entering into our glory days. We have all kinds of people in our church. And you know what? The gospel is good news. We don't preach bad news. We don't preach a message of judgment. We have anybody, whatever their persuasion is in terms of their philosophy of life, their sexual persuasion, their religious persuasion, they're welcome to come. And we don't preach the problem, we preach the answer. And the answer is Jesus. But I believe that even as we're seeing an acceleration of the world, have you noticed what's happening in the world? Look at what Disney is producing in terms of woke culture. Look at what Disney's response is in terms of the legislation in the U.S. concerning abortion. And they have pledged to accelerate their woke agenda. Every program your children watch that's produced by Disney, whether it's on television or, or in the cinema, has an ungodly agenda attached to it. As there is an acceleration of all of these things, because the Bible says it will become increasingly dark. Sin will abound, but the Bible says when sin abounds, grace shall much more abound. And I believe that we are about to see even as the world is shaken and will continue to be shaken, we're about to see the hearts of people change and soften towards the gospel like never ever before. The prophet Joel said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters and so on. And we love that part of the verse, but it ends by saying multitudes are in the valley of decision. The greater outpouring of the Holy Ghost, when we see revivals happening like it's happening in in this place because how many of you know this is a church that was birthed in the very fires of revival that's why we're carrying revival throughout the whole of Europe because we were birthed in the fire of revival here at Durban Christian Center but in the wake of this outpouring of the Holy Ghost we are about to see a harvest of souls like never ever before come on somebody shout hallelujah my question to you this morning is, are you ready and are you willing to have a bold and a daring faith in this day and in this hour? These are the greatest days you've ever lived through. You now, Pastor John was speaking about the fact how we look back at the times of old. Oh, if we could have lived through the book of Acts. I want to tell you that the patriarchs, the saints of old, look at the days that we're living right now and they wish they could be living in such a time like this. Devil tries to convince you that your best days are behind you. I want to tell you, you are entering right now into the most exciting adventure of faith. But my question to you is, are you willing to be prepared of this great end time move of the Holy Ghost? If you are, I want you to stand to your feet all over this building right now. I want to prophesy some things. Just feel a spirit of prophecy this morning. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, Church, my bride, you were created for my glory. You were created to carry my glory over the earth, says the Spirit of the Lord. You are entering the days of the greater glory, says God. Lift up your head. Open up the ancient gates. I am the King of glory. I'm about to step in. I'm about to begin to manifest my presence, my Shekinah in your midst like never ever before. Even as you read in my word, when the glory cloud came and filled the house and the priest could not stand to minister, you are my kings. You are my priests in this hour. Get ready for the Lord for encounters with me. I'm about to come. Feel this place of worship. My glory cloud will invade 
touch this place like you've never seen before. Get ready, says God, for there will be times and moments when you're lying on your face all over this altar, all over this platform, up and down these aisles, says God, you are entering the time of my greater glory. And when my glory begins to manifest, the lost will come, the nations will come, for I'm about to step into your midst, says God, as the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Come on, lift your hands all over this place this morning. Father, I pray for every person in this place, every hand raised this morning. God, and I pray for our Holy Ghost shaking now in Jesus' name. I pray for our Holy Ghost awakening now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those who are up against the wall right now. Even as we come out of this pandemic, God, they're looking at the limitations of an economy, the restrictions in terms of their businesses. I thank you that right now, God, gates are beginning to open up. Come on, somebody, open your mouth and begin to praise Him. Like a gate just opened up for you. Like a financial gate just opened up. Like a healing gate just opened up. If that's for you this morning, just begin to release the sound of praise in this place. Arise, shine. For the Lord has come and His glory is risen upon you. Come on. Arise, shine, for His light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Father, would you feel, would you feel, would you feel, would you feel every temple, every vessel, in this place this morning. Double portion, God. Come to tell somebody this morning, what are you doing sleeping in that place? I said, what are you doing sleeping in that place? The Spirit of the Lord says, get up. The chains are off. Get up and walk out. The doors open. The gates open. Come on, I don't know who that's for. Somebody right now just needs to give a little prophetic shake. You got saved 20 years ago, but you're still carrying some shackles this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, shake it off. Shake it off. Begin to walk out. Live out the freedom that is yours in Jesus today. Shake it off, shake it off. Come on, somebody. I hear the rumble. I hear the shaking. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, when they said, God, give us greater boldness to preach this word. The place where they were gathered was shaken by the power and by the presence of the Holy Ghost. I feel a shaking in the spirit right now. Shaking, shaking. Every head bowed, please. I believe that there are people in this place today. Bible says in Jeremiah 29 11 God has a good plan God has a good purpose for your life plans to prosper you give you a hope and give you a future but the devil also has a plan for your life John 10 10 to rob to kill and to destroy and unless you're serving Jesus with all of your heart every fiber of your being says you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve him and me if you're not serving Jesus this morning or if you're a backslider this morning there are things that have been assigned to your life 
whose sole and only job is to keep you right where you are, stuck in that place where you are. To allow you to go just so far and no further from where they put you. But I believe today there are people who are going to step out of prison cells. I don't know what it is that's held you captive for years. In fact, there are people in this place you've been saved five years, but you've never known freedom. The Bible says, He whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. You shall know the truth. You've heard the truth this morning, and the truth will set you free. Maybe you're still asleep between the enemies of your past, but you know Jesus. Today you felt that shaking on the inside and you're saying, God, I want my total freedom. It's my portion. Get out of your seat quickly. Run fast as you can. Don't miss this moment. There's a shaking anointing to loose you, to break you free. Quickly get out of your seat. Addictions this morning. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's areas of your mind. Mental health issues. Depression. Substance abuse. Come on. There are people all over this room. Don't miss your opportunity. Come and step into freedom right now. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come and lift your voice and just begin to pray as people are coming. Get on our there. Pray in the spirit. Just take two, take two minutes to pray this morning. People's destinies are on the line. Get up and do Come on, we're waiting for you. Quickly, 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 come. Prison doors are opening right now. Shackles are breaking right now. Get out of your seat. Quickly, right now, come. You know you need to make right with God. This is your but God this morning. Quickly, people are coming all over the room. But if you've never, ever made a decision to serve Jesus with all of your heart, give Him everything that is in you, your past, your present, your future. Today can be the day of the greatest transition, the greatest deliverance. He'll bring you out of the kingdom of darkness of the rule and the reign of the enemy of your faith who's out to destroy you into the kingdom of his own dear son, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of life, the kingdom of truth. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus right now, get out of your seat quickly, 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 come. a whole bunch of things in this prayer so whether this is your first time commitment to Jesus or you're renewing your commitment to him or today you're just stepping into that total freedom and liberty that is yours in Jesus I want you to pray this prayer with me and if you pray it out there and you need to be prayed for come quickly as well say father in the name of Jesus thank you for the gift of your son Jesus thank you that you came 
that you laid down your life for me that you gave your everything for me that you took upon yourself the curse of sin and death in the grave that I could walk in the blessing that I could live in freedom today Lord Jesus I bow my knee to you and I surrender myself totally and completely forgive me Lord for everything in my life all my sin all my disobedience every time I've chosen my way above your way wash me and cleanse me and forgive me by the blood of Jesus I acknowledge you as Savior of my whole life I acknowledge you as Lord and King of my whole life I thank you that today I am not just forgiven but I am set free indeed in Jesus name Amen now just begin to thank him this morning can we pray for people pray all the pastors that are here come and help us pray those of you in the front just lift up your hands we're almost done folks but let's just uh if you're in in your seat right now maybe you're not here uh maybe you should come i don't know you want us to pray for you you can come as well but let's just uh, observe this time let's go ahead and minister to them this morning hallelujah those of you at home we're going to we're going to dismiss you, those of you that are at home right now. We're going to hand back to the presenters right now. Uh, and uh, God, just God bless you. All right, go ahead and minister. Go ahead and minister.